Good day, hello viewers. I am Nisham. I am student of NBA ITV. In this session, I will talk about the, grill, the, red, the regulation greatly reduce air pollution. Well, uh, firstly, we will start from uh, the global warming. Uh, well, what is exactly the definition of global warming? And everybody knows, and maybe you know also, but the essence are the global warming consists of first, the increased temperature of atmosphere earth and the ocean. And then the increased temperature of the atmosphere and oceans affect to the climate change. Well, what exactly the reason of the global warming could be happened? Yes, ozone. One of the reasons is ozone. Ozone form when the air pollutant react with the sunlight and especially in hot summer. And the problems being worse cause of the air is being stagnant. And could you imagine how much how the how much disease come from the air pollution? And could you imagine also uh, how the dark uh, the, the sky is being dark? And is still ozone alone? No. There's has three factors such as first um, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, and airborne. Well, <coughs> if uh, uh, no regulation to control that uh, air pollution, uh, <coughs> human health could be damaged because of more disease come from the pollutions, right? <coughs> and uh, fortunately, in the 3rd December 1970, the US government under the President Richard Nixon create, <coughs> established the organization that have responsibility in order to <coughs> control the uh, the environment, the pollution environment, and to protect the human health, called EPA. EPA is Environmental Protection Agency. In 1990, they make a regulation called Clean Air Act. Okay, so from now we have regulation uh, because of uh, the pollution that happened and how effective the regulation that made by the EPA. Yes, I will show you. In 1993, the four biggest crowded city in America, such as Washington, New York City, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia, could reduce the number of summer advisory days. And what the number of advisory days? Okay, it's about the ozone alert. What alert? Okay, I've explained you about the ozone, and now I explained you about the alert. Well, the ozone could reach, could almost reach the highest levels of hazardous and it called the ozone alert. You know, in 1988, before the Clean Air Act implemented in 1990, more of, uh, let's say, 20 to 30 days from number from the ozone alert, and in 1993, it could reduce to uh, 7 to 8, uh, even no, no days from ozone alert. Uh, well, uh, now I have to correlate between the uh, regulation that EPA did and what our material course today. Well, <coughs> what EPA did is they make regulation in order to control the air pollution, which is the material course is external diseconomies. Well, we have found external diseconomies. So, what the definition of the external diseconomies, right? Yes. External economies is uncompensated costs imposed on firms or any individuals, costs of consumption or production that are uh, produced by third parties. Well, externalities. When we talk about the externalities, we will talk about the marginal societal cost, marginal societal benefit, and the marginal private benefit. Well, when the marginal societal cost bigger than marginal private cost, it means your firm produces too much air pollution. Well. When the marginal societal cost equal with the marginal societal benefit, it means that regulation that EPA made or any other firm made is effective. And I show you. From to in order to reduce the air pollution, you have to invest in technology with use the clean air age, clean air energy. And when you uh, invest is in from the technology, the cost that you invest from that could reduce the disease that uh, produced from that air pollution. 
Well, this is our uh, presentation today. I'm sorry for my inconvenient words, and thank you very much.